Sitting before us is an old 1950s train station. And this is actually a viewer suggested location. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at it and learn more about it. If you'd like to see it too, all you need to do is come along with me. And yes, Mr. RJ78 Productions is here with me as well to check it out. So the one thing I want to do before we get closer to it is show you an image that I found back in the day when it was in operation. And I want you to pay close attention to it because a few things you'll notice is that the building looks pretty much identical, including the Tunkanic nameplate over the doorway. There's also multiple main lines and a locomotive coming down what appears to be the same track that's in use right now. And there was no traditional loading dock. It actually had a concrete pad and had some luggage or freight carts. So this was pretty certain this was a freight depot or a freight station, not for passenger use. And we heard a horn in the distance, or may or may not be a train coming as well. So we're currently waiting to see if a train is on the approach or not. We did hear a horn in the distance, but in the meantime, I want to tell you a couple more things. As mentioned, this was built in 1954. I don't know when it was last used, but this was for the Lehigh Valley Railroad. And now this is Reading Northern coming by here, but Lehigh Valley did pretty much dominate this area with multiple lines, but also nearby vicinity, which is kind of right where you hear those vehicles, was the Erie Line as well. So this was a pretty good hub of activity for railroading back in the day. Second thing is that this building is posted. It is owned and posted by Reading Northern. So we're not gonna be going inside. We're gonna be respectful and observe it from the outside but we will give you different views and vantage points from around the exterior of the building. So after seeing the photo that I showed you, this is how it looks in present day. Still recognizable, but in much worse condition. Understandably so, it has been used in decades. And now it's kind of a storage area for railroad ties that are gonna be getting replaced or already replaced. Although the doors are open, like I said, we're not going inside, but we will at least get you up close to it, give you some views through the doorways, but it's uh, something to check out though, another part of rail history. And special thanks to the viewers of Len and Kristen. I think they found this last year and they sent me pictures of it and told me about it. And I added it to my list and today's the day that I got to check it out. So thanks to you guys for the viewer suggestion. Not a very impressive looking building and not huge, but it was built for a specific purpose. And the thing that I found fascinating is that in front of it is the concrete, I'm sorry, a blacktop pad where we saw in the old picture, those carts. And you can actually see in that picture too where a old automobile was crossing. There used to be an old road that went through here which is now blocked off. But it's pretty neat to see back in the day with the locomotive coming through, the vehicle, the cargo carts, if you want to call them that. You can see an old insulator pole behind it. And it has the old tile glass, like the subway tiles almost. Let's get a closer look. So here is the blacktop, which was a basically like the pad here. So in the old picture too, we did have the Tunkanic sign and the piece of wood still up there, but the name is long gone. As mentioned, it was Lehigh Valley Railroad, but it's in the town of Tunkanic. They got most of the windows covered with plywood. Busted out windows. This was a general entryway. See, they had a little railing right here. Old wooden door. And the handle still on it right there. It is a concrete base foundation with brick walls on the exterior with cinder block on the inside that I can see from here. It's built strong and tough. Now back here is where you would find a loading dock. And this would be for trucks, for vehicles. They'd be able to back up here, open the garage door to load or unload any goods but on the back side is where rail went next to it. 
to deliver by rail. And there's actually some old rail ties in here. Some of them are scattered about, some of them are still in place, but there, I believe there was two lines back here, one of which went right next to the building. And there's another loading door right there. It's actually a sliding barn door on the backside. <clears throat> so rail was able to, rail car was able to deliver here or pick up here. And this was for truck use. So dual purpose to get the goods in and out of this little station. The old section of a crossing gate back here. Here's a better look too. It is wide open. And as, ex as I was explaining, there are the rail ties still in place. This fence is obviously newer, but a line went right here. And I believe another one went closer. So like I said, a double line right here, kind of like that. But nature is reclaiming a lot of trees growing up here and brush. And if we were here in the summertime, I wouldn't be able to even see the building right now. But everything is dead and dying off and have fallen to the ground. So it gives us be much better visibility. Take a like post here. I was just kind of looking around to see what else there is. This spot, as I was showing RJ, this concrete post reminds me of a, reminds us both of a mile marker, but it's pretty tall. And you can see the old downspouts, like the gutter system. And as we come to the window here, you can see where the broken glass is still up there. The inside, tile walls, some chairs, a big electrical box here. Wooden doors with the old push button lock system on it. It's in surprisingly good condition. I mean, overall. Not horrible. Some graffiti. People have obviously been inside. Yeah, probably wouldn't uh, take much to get it back. No, it's, it's still able to be saved if they want to repurpose it. Yeah. You see this uh, rail symbol on here, too? Right here we do have a chimney because they're some type of heating system. So they have an external chimney of sorts. I'm guessing there's probably a coal furnace or a semi-modern furnace that they use depending on how late it was used. Another downspout there. Another windowsill with some nature's carpet growing on it. And I was showing RJ too a couple things over here. We do have what appears to be like a, almost like a well system. Some old valves down there, but a relatively more modern monitoring system. There's a cable going down into the ground or one of the pipes. So that is intriguing. But over here too, I spotted a, where is it at? Oh, there it is. Yeah, some more ties with the spikes and the plates. So the rail would have been right there on top of it. So they are still here slowly being covered and reclaimed by nature and they do continue out that way I didn't even realize this was a bathroom oh yeah they must have had explosive diarrhea <laughs> yeah yeah it's a tile bathroom you can see the duct work for the heating pretty high ceilings in there too I'm guessing that's probably another bathroom right there then too. All right, let's get around to the other side and show you what that looks like. There is another open doorway, I believe on this end over here. And I also can give you a look inside the uh, barn door door as well. Like I said, we can't go inside, but we can get as close as we can without crossing any boundaries. You see a bump stop here, it's a big piece of timber. And they even use some spikes keeping it in place. Metal plate here. 
and then it brings you to the inside. See some lockers. There's the back side of the garage door. It's really well built. Here's a perfect showing of what I said, a cinder block and then brick. So it's built tough. That's why it's holding up so well. Really well constructed. Well, RJ did make another little find over here, which is pretty neat. You can see this uprooted tree here. Well, it actually lifted up the railroad tie. So it was embedded there and it just lifted it right up. And the other unique thing is right next to it, you can see where the other tie is still in place. So it's like a clean separation. So there are ties buried underneath the, the sediment here. But this one got lifted completely up when the tree overturned. Back a little further now, there's remnants of an old road that used to exist here. See the ramp coming up? They had a crossing section and although you could still cross it, it's a dead end now. But back in the day, it did continue through this way. There used to be a road going through here. Now that is um, like a major road. I don't know which one that is. I think 29, Route 29. But they kind of re-altered it, but looks like it just kind of snakes along here, but I believe it did go straight across back in the day. They do have crossing signs here, but it's not an actively used road. But now I'm going to take you to the other side of the building where there's another open doorway and we can get some more shots of the inside. All right, so I'm going to stick you guys in using my extendable selfie stick here. I'm going to be standing right here and we'll get a glimpse on the inside. And I'll be videoing him for proof. Yes. So you guys are inside, I'm still outside, but that's what it looks like. It's like a desk over there and a counter. Tile walls. All right, I'm jealous. You guys got to go inside, I didn't. No fair. And if you're watching closely, we're being watched. Do you see it? Right there. No, actually that's a fixture for a spotlight. Like that one back there. Yeah. <laughs> First glance though, we both thought it was a security camera, but just an empty light socket. So again, I'm gonna stay on the outside and just show you from the doorway here. So we're looking at the other side. You guys are just stuck through that opening there, that doorway. I can see the steps going up to the loading, unloading area. And I think these are the bathrooms that we saw from the backside. our look at the 1954 train station or depot whatever you want to call it I wouldn't classify it as abandoned because it's still privately owned but it has been used in a long time you can tell people have been inside but since it is posted we wanted to check it out respectfully and share it with you because it is a part of railroading history part of the old Lehigh Valley but now Reagan Northern does occupy the line and the building itself unfortunately a train never did come through we thought we heard a horn it just never came. As far as uh, we've been here, nothing did come through. Would have been great if it did. The other thing too is back there, that building was the passenger station. It's been reconverted to a chiropractor, yeah, chiropractor, chiropractic business, but that was an old passenger station as well. So I 
Ah, uh, truck brakes. Thought it was something else. So we got passenger station, freight station, and where we're standing would have been multiple lines coming through here. So although it looks a lot different today, still familiar from the past. Thanks once again to my friends of the channel, Kristen and Len, for sharing this with me. I knew I wanted to check it out when they sent me the pictures and told me about it, and I'm glad I was able to come here, not only with RJ, but to bring you along as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you real soon in the next video.